knowledge and skills make Hampton Law a resource focused on the protection of the client's interest and overall goals. We value our clients and truly enjoy working with them. Visit thamptonlaw.com to conveniently schedule an appointment online. Tamika Hampton Esquire. 1631 Rock Springs Road, Suite 336, Apopka, Florida, 407-494-1471, thamptonlaw.com. No. No. Come on, him. Ooh, I like him. The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slowburn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge, featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. When it comes to professional learning, teachers deserve better. From the leader in online learning, Stride brings you the Stride Professional Development Center, an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that gives teachers choice and flexibility, allowing them to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. It's time you take charge of your learning. Visit us today to get started. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want to lock yeah, and who the ball, the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir, yes, sir. and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. Dr. Bills inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Mike is still on assignment. With that being said, uh, let's get into the mid-major division on the men's side in week number nine. Those teams dropping out this week, a couple of changes. Xavier Goldrush drops out with 22 wins. They had two losses uh, the final week. They did have a win in there, but they had two losses, including an early loss in the um, – Red River Athletic Conference. We'll see that cost them in terms of bid for the tournament. Tougaloo Bulldogs, as Charles mentioned earlier, lost as well in terms of GCAC, which will be the HBCU Athletic Conference starting in July. Uh, they drop out uh, with 23 and 6, 15 and 3. Uh, they lost the opening round, quarterfinals, major upset in that uh, tournament there. Uh, but look at the teams getting votes. And I'm going to go a little deeper than what's on the poll because I just want to let Charles know, uh, as I asked him on the women's side, you know, the type of basketball is being played, number wins, just how deep it goes with those conceivably receiving votes that I generally leave off. But as we round out stuff and, and start to finish these things off, I want to give a credit to some of these teams going down there. But the ones we're looking at, Tougaloo Bulldogs, 23-6, and 15-3, they're still receiving votes. First team outside of that top five. At number seven, essentially, would be Texas College Steers, 22 uh, and eight on the season, 16 and five. Uh, in terms of what they're going to actually, uh, 17 and five, I should say, with 22 uh, votes there. Also, you have Benedict Tigers, who can add on to this because they're in the tournament, 21 and six, 15 and six out of the SIEC. Morehouse Maroon Tigers, great season they had out there yeah. in that. Heck of the East Division. They're not even in the top five, Charles. They're mm -hmm. at 19 and 9, 16 and 5. They get a chance uh, with another victory to get to 20 wins on the season. Uh, you had that Xavier Gold Rush. They fall all the way behind Benedict and Morehouse in terms of previous being in five with those losses. They're at 22 and 7, 17 and 5. Talladega Tornadoes, 22 and 7, 10 and 4. And Lincoln, Pennsylvania Alliance. They won a championship out of the CIAA, 17 and 13, 10 and 7, uh, behind all those teams looking out to try to figure out what the season is. Let you know the depth of basketball being played between the NCAA Division II and the NIHBC programs, particularly NIA 
is deep this year in terms of some quality programs. Mm. I'll be fascinated to see how many teams get bids on the men's side that may be even deeper than what we've seen on the women's side of certainly playing good basketball in their own right. Let's we'll do it without further ado. We got two new teams in turn. The top five at number five with three big wins uh, this past week, particularly two in the tournament. Philander Smith Panthers are 21 and 8, 14 and 4, 45 points, not ranked. They do cut down the nets and they are represented out of the GCAC as they get it done. You have Florida Memorial Lions at 21 and 8, 14 and 4. They were not ranked two big victories in their tournament, the Southern Conference. Florida Memorial is ranked. Um, 25, as they were receiving votes previous week, but in terms of the national poll rankings, they are in the poll ranking. They beat that St. Thomas, Florida team, that was ranked 21. Uh, that was also receiving votes the previous time they released uh, the NIA poll on the 28th. So both of those teams in the top 25 in terms of Florida Memorial. As we continue to go, we got Clark Atlanta Panthers, 22-5. and five. They shared the East Division Championship with more outs. 16 and 5, 64 points. They remain. Yeah. I love my HBCU. And boy, I love it, love it. I love it, love it. I love my HBCU. And man, I hope my team they won one. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. 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 I tune into the HBCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a lot. Yeah. If they lost, yeah. I'm quiet as a mouth. Yeah. But if they won, she tab. Yeah. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, yeah. he know what he be talking about. Talkin Mike about. and Charles, Talk. they know what they be talking about. Yeah. Talkin they about. compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot. Yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, Boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yeah. This is Dr. Cavill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Charles, you see my regalia there? Just, you know. Uh, I saw regalia in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you got to let folks know you're real. You're a real doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. This is Dr. Bill's Inside the HBC Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Mike Washington is on assignment. Although this is a little intriguing assignment. We get this cryptic text last minute. <laughs> Come on, I for tickets to the Bun B. Any of y'all interested in going? We're like, yeah. You know, when is all this? It's like tonight. He sends it like, you know, a little bit before everything. I said, well, you know, we're going to do the show. He said, yeah, just, you know, get it, knock it out and come on by. So <laughs> we're going to try to figure this out. Get through this and see if we can slide on over there, Charles. Uh, you know, get over to the radio. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I was like, it must be nice. It must be nice to be Mike. He just happens up on these expensive tickets. You know, he in the suite somewhere. So I'm going to find. There you go. Well, I should say we're going to find. Exactly. With that being said, welcome to, is that we, welcome to episode 492 of Inside the HBC Sports Lab radio show and podcast. The show that's covering the sporting HBC dash for all things HBC sports. For institutions large and small from the NAIA to the NCAA. We share insights and information on the HBC sports culture, HBC athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBC athletic programs in the business of HBC sports. We just call it HBC sports pedagogy for short. With that being said, we also, you know, intake in the culture, if you would, and we're going to find a way to get us a little Bun B in here and mix it all up well, as he gets it done. I'm your host, Dr. Yannick Cavill, along with my co-host, Mike Washington, Charles Fish, filming from our home studios and sending a signal live to Case Waste 1230 AM studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. That's multi-Hall of Fame, Ralph Cooper, in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. With that being said, we'll say this again and remind you later, but we'll only be doing one show this week, third week in a row, as we're getting it done, as we will be on the road, and we're going to do our part in terms of covering the MEAC and SWAC basketball tournaments. 
I'm scheduled to head to Norfolk State, Charles, I mean, Norfolk, Virginia, to cover the MEAC, home of Norfolk State University, while Charles is going to head over to Birmingham and cover the SWAC in terms of basketball tournament. So we'll have a split crew to make sure we can get it all in uh, to get this done. So we'll keep you updated. So therefore, we're not going to do a show on Thursday. It is spring break here. So part of our spring break, uh, as other folks get to go to the beaches, we get to go to the holes and get into the arenas and follow some basketball. Not a bad choice, but you know, I saw a picture of uh, brother Alan Williams and he's on the beach with the seagulls dead. Diving into the water, I was like, "Oh, something wrong with this picture." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, getting a little uh, a little sand in between the toes. Like we are at somebody's arena. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, maybe we should at least find a way to go to uh, uh, the University of Bahamas or the University of Virgin Islands. Uh, in terms of at least we can go to those courts and literally be on the beach. So. Uh, we'll have to figure that out. They do have basketball. Maybe we'll find a way to do it early in the year in November when it's going mm. these parts. So we can look at that next year and even get with Roy to do a show from there. We can see if we mm. can make it all work. With that being said, uh, let's get into the updates and news of the week. A lot of this, a lot of different things. I know you wanted to go off the radar before we get into some of this basketball talk. Uh, obviously, Division One. we told you about the MIAC SWAC tournaments. Uh, you have Hampton and OVC in terms of those tournaments uh, closing out uh, last week. Uh, obviously, you had the announcement of NCAA Division II and NIA tournaments, so we'll tell you what that looks like throughout the show. So we'll get it all in, we'll give our poll rankings as we close out uh, the regular season for the mid-major division and uh, really start to get ready to close out things at the major division level. Uh, but I think you had an interesting story that you wanted to kind of get some dialogue on and tell some folks that may not have heard about it. What's your thoughts, Charles? Yeah, and this story comes from HBCUGameday.com, but uh, mobile sports betting is now legal in, in the state of North Carolina, and the HBCUs are set to benefit from it. A new law passed last June uh, went into effect on Monday that allows adult bettors to start placing legal wagers via their mobile phone. And as such, the state of North Carolina is set to disperse nearly $2 million to more than a dozen of its schools, including uh, HBCUs. So we take a look at the five state-funded HBCUs uh, in the state of North Carolina, Elizabeth City State, Fayetteville State, North Carolina a t North Carolina Central, and Winston-Salem State, along with other state schools, are being given $1 million each for their athletic departments. Uh, so I think this is this is tremendous. When you take a look at it, it says the state budget also uh, uh, allocated one point one six million dollars for each of its 13 athletic departments uh, from sports betting revenue in the 2024 25 budget. So the 10 initial programs, including HBCUs, could see close to two million dollars for the fiscal year that starts July 1st as the state reaps the benefits wow. of sports betting. So that's uh, uh, you talking $2 million to the athletic department. That's pretty significant. That's really significant, particularly when it's revenue that you aren't expecting. And now you can, you know, incur and put in your budget in terms of some need-based items you want to do or go in some other directions. I wonder if they have any uh, particular requirements of how the money could be spent. That's something to kind of look into. But regardless, uh, as you said, that is very notable in regards to North Carolina and how uh, other CIAA schools, MEAC with Central and obviously uh, the Coastal with North Carolina a and you know, how does it affect um, their states and uh, next initiatives? I do like the fact that they connected the sports betting and they could use the money, obviously, for a number of things. But they said, all right, it's sports related. Uh, state has put in it. Let's use the money back in terms of our institutions in the state. Uh, from an athletic perspective, obviously, um, all the state institutions get some money, but uh, we particularly focus on HBCUs. So that is fascinating uh, from that perspective. Great information there. While we're at it, yeah, let's get into I, I, a little bit of talk. Go ahead. No, I, I remember one of your first lectures. There's never not a time when when sports and politics doesn't intersect. So this is another uh, uh, interesting case with sports and politics intersects. We also see that in the state of Florida with the NAACP uh, uh, talking of, of 
uh, African American uh, athletes should look at boycotting the state of Florida because of uh, their stance in regards to diversity, equity, uh, and inclusion, uh, closing those departments. So uh, here's another instance where you know sports and politics intersect. So very interesting to take a look at. Yeah, we talked about obviously legendary running back from Florida Cowboys, Emmitt Smith, kind of starting that in terms of pushing at the telling athletes, uh, particularly those in Florida, really consider their decision in regards to not getting the support and how it affects them. And now you see the NAACP supporting that initiative uh, with a letter to the NCA uh, uh, telling um, athletes, particularly African-American Black athletes, to consider uh, in regards to their choice of, of institutions to participate their skills at and certainly uh, taking note of what Florida is doing. Um, so it's going to be intriguing to kind of see where these battle lines uh, cross. Um, the first time you see what is perceived as a big star athlete, four or five star athlete, if he makes a term and suggests that his decision uh, in some ways is associated, that will really, I think, ratchet things up. Uh, so it'll be sure. fascinating to see how this continues uh, to move forward in regards to the landscape. And you're absolutely correct. You talk about the political landscape in sports. It's always been there, will always be there. Uh, but this is another example of it taking front stage uh, as athletics in the world of sports, particularly at the collegiate level, continues to turn. Let's take it back to on the courts, uh, get into a little bit of talk uh, from, from uh, the NAI side. Let's start with NAI and talk about that tournament as the field was announced. Uh, with the number of teams, uh, obviously one of the biggest ones uh, people look at is Langston in terms of them getting in the field. They are number one seed. Uh, some people would argue one of the top seeds overall uh, in terms of being number two nationally ranked. Uh, but before we get to them, you have the men's. Kind of want to get your thoughts on any uh, of these pretty good seed for Florida Memorial Lions, the number two seed. And they kind of mm. were quiet under the radar, uh, but they play in what many perceive as a very tough conference, the Sun Conference. Uh, they finished at the top of their conference in the regular season and went on to win the championship, uh, getting the conference championship the automatic bid, but it helped them in terms of the seeding. They were first faced in the first round evangel of Missouri, so that's going to be fascinating to see that matchup, and these games start Friday. You have Texas College Steers right here in the backyard, Texas College number nine. Uh, it is on that large bid for Texas College uh, as they get a chance to play in the postseason. I think this is one of their first appearances, if not first appearance in the NIA program. It is um, They're really making a statement. Only two wins on the season, just eight losses. So uh, significant. Last time they've had this type of season was 29-2010. So credit to uh, Texas College Steers. And that's out of the Red River Athletic Conference as they get it done. Uh, we've talked about Langston all year long. They've essentially been our number one team and just stayed there. Um, so uh, they play in Baloo, Nebraska, uh, on that first round. And obviously they play in Langston as the NIA is set up where you play in these regional pods. And then if you can get out those regions, you get to a neutral site and kind of go through those multiple-day tournaments. So it'll be fascinating to see who gets out of there. Not finished yet. A couple of more teams get in here, five teams essentially. Number two seed goes to two blue Bulldogs, one of the teams we were looking at closely to see if they got in, Charles. Back-to-back -back yeah. years getting in here. Big move and big statement by them. Uh, some people are concerned where they're going to get in. They get in uh, after losing the GCAC, which is a statement. Two teams do come out of the GCAC with the number of teams they have, which is good. They come in as a number 10 seed playing Tennessee Southern. So I'm interested to see. Did a couple of rounds last year. Can they go deeper in the tournament? Make a move, and it's fascinating to keep your eyes on that. And the final seed goes to the Landon Smith Panthers. And when I say final, final of the men's HBC programs, number 15 seeds. Remember, they won the GCAC Conference Tournament, soon to be HBCU Athletic Conference, HBCU AC. Uh, they take on Cumberland, Kentucky, in terms of what that looks like. Before we get to the women, it's a good chance to get you jump in here and talk about your thoughts in terms of – the men in the NAI tournament, what are your expectations of what this may look like? 
Well, I'm really uh, excited to see what Langston uh, can do. I mean, number one seed, 31 on the season. We talked about them all season. Uh, and now the, the spotlight shines the brightest on the Langston Lion uh, basketball team. So uh, really excited to see uh, what they can do in this tournament. Uh, but you have a bevy of teams that are, I think are, are, are very worthy. You, you mentioned Florida Memorial playing in that tough uh, Sun Conference. Uh, what can they do in this tournament? So uh, all teams with, with 20 win uh, programs, uh, Tougaloo in, in third year in a row, I believe Tougaloo has won 20 some odd games. So really excited to see what our HBCU teams can do against uh, competition from outside of those uh, HBCU conferences. One of the missing teams that we thought highly of all year long was Xavier. Uh, they mm. were essentially third, if you would, in terms of tied right there with Texas College Steers at a Red River Athletic Conference. Uh, they lost early in the um, Red River uh, Conference tournament. Uh, what are your thoughts of them not being able to get a bid in the tournament? Any concern there or – uh, do you kind of agree with the fact that they were out there? They would have been the 16, which would have been a major statement for NIA HBCU programs getting that 16 in a tournament on the men's. Yeah, side. just a really strong field uh, when you talk about getting five teams in. So that's, it's tough to argue for the sixth one, although they're deserving. But, uh, you know, five getting in, like I said, it's a pretty strong field this season. Yeah, no no doubt, no doubt. Good point you make there. That loss also to Texas College uh, during the season uh, late uh, cost them as well when you talk about the head-to-head because they could have been looking at the two programs. You give Texas College a nod, going a little deeper in the tournament and having the head-to-head win later in the season over Xavier probably did them in. Let's look at what that looks like for the women teams in terms of moving forward and kind of get your thoughts on NIA on the women's side. Fist Bulldogs uh, get it done. Number 16 seeds, they will face Indiana Wesley uh, as a 16 seed again. Russ Bearcats, you know, we've talked about them, our number one team. Fascinating to see what they can do. They go off into the hills. They go to Dakota Wesleyan. That is in South Dakota. They are a 10 seed. I thought maybe they'd get a slightly higher. Yeah, seed. No, that's, that's surprising. Wow. Uh, you have Langston Lions. So you got the men's program, the number one. Uh, women's program did well. Um, they finished at the top of the Sooner Athletic Conference in the regular season and made a run to a championship leads to the uh, regular season champions. So nothing to hang the head over there. Langston Lions come in as a number eight seed. Uh, Spring Harbor, Michigan. So you see the women getting the end, but uh, higher seeds than you've seen on the men's yeah. side. But yeah. Xavier, while they don't get in on the men's side, they get in on the women's side. The gold nuggets are in. Number 14 seed, they continue to play well and get it done and represent in the NIA tournament, representing their Red River Athletic Conference. They play John Brown, Arkansas, uh, just to give you an update there. So uh, you have four teams on the women's side and five on the men's side. What are you talking about? Uh, Four teams representing HBCUs on the women's side. I mean, just the higher seeds is what jumps out at me. I mean – Russ is 28-3, a 15-game win streak, and they come in as a number 10 seed. Uh, you got Xavier uh, sitting out there 25-6, and six, uh, and they're number 14 seed. So there's just a uh, – man, talk about the the, 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 the competition and, and how, how tough this field is when you got some serious 20-win teams with some big, uh, big win streaks coming in at, at much higher seeds. So uh, this will be uh, – Kind of interesting to sit back and see what can they do against uh, some of these uh, teams like uh, John Brown. They won 26 straight going up against Xavier. And then uh, to see what the Russell Lady Bearcats can do up there in South Dakota. And I know, uh, obviously, when you pick your teams, you look at a singular season. But Russ College has been a very good basketball program over the last couple of years. And usually you get credit for that, you know, in terms of least your seeding, particularly if you uh, do it that season. Uh, it adds on. It doesn't look like Russ has been able to get over the hump. And they play a pretty good non-conference schedule in terms of the teams they select um, and going out in some of these tournaments. So it hasn't really paid them much dividends. We'll see uh, what that trend looks like as the years come up. Let's switch over before we take this first break and talk a little bit about the Division Two side. Then we'll get into the poll rankings. And um, last part of the show, we'll get a really depth analysis on the tournaments. 
Uh, we'll give you a framework in regards to what to look for, to see particularly what Charles is looking at. But we encourage you to go back and check out um, BCSN uh, teamed up with uh, Sports Wrap with uh, AD, Drew, and Brian, Charles and I, and even Charles Edmond in terms of Tall Band Radio got a chance to give you a deep dive last night, um, a great deal of content of both tournaments. So we ask you to go check that out as we'll look at it overall in a different direction. So the details, if you want those in regards to particular matchups, you can go check that out and get that kind of information. But as we do that, let's talk about the women. Miles Golden Bear gets in. They get in, although um, they they won that championship, SIAC. Got it done against the Kentucky State. Um, got a little payback as they uh, were a number two in the regular season. Uh, in that West division that saw it come down between Kentucky State and Miles. Uh, HC in that region over there, they will face a tough matchup with Vadosta State that is always really strong, but they had it again. One of the surprise teams that had a great season, surprises some, they come in as an eighth season, West Virginia State Yellow Jackets. Uh, they play Gannon in terms of that. As we get through this, you'll see a uh, team, Virginia State, that was left out. You see Kentucky State left out. Obviously, different regions in terms of Kentucky State. Uh, but if you look at it in terms of Virginia State, some people say maybe uh, Virginia State was knocked out with West Virginia State uh, in terms of that. We'll see what Charles thinks about that. And number three, Fayetteville State Broncos. Um, they get it done. They play a matchup against Indiana, Pennsylvania. They are number three seed coming out of the CIAA. A great season. Uh, but they were the only team to come out of the CIAA. Again, we were looking at maybe Virginia State being able to get an at-large bid. It was not to be the case in terms of where that was. Before we go to the men, let's talk about the women in terms of those bids. You see three HBCUs, Fayetteville oh. State, CIAA, West Virginia out of those conferences, and Mile out of the SIAC. Doc, what do you think led to uh, West Virginia State kind of booting Virginia State out of that out of that uh, at-large bid? I don't know, you know, per se, you never know because they're in those closed rooms. I'm just putting it out there that could have been it. And obviously, I'm not sure they really look at it like that. But you talk about those top regions. Um, I do think West Virginia kind of edged out and bought somebody out. I, I'm curious just to know how close Virginia State was on that line. You know, mm -hmm. were they anywhere close? And as you said, did it kind of push them out? Or were they much lower down and really didn't have a case uh, in terms of the committee. So that's what I look at. Uh, do you see any of these teams in regards to having a chance to win a game or two? And the tournament, I guess, is another question some people talk about. It, it's some very Particularly tough matchups. Uh, yeah, West Virginia yeah. going up against Gannon. I think Gannon, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, that is a, a tough one there to take a look at. I think, what, Gannon 32-2 and two overall. They've won eight straight. That's a tough one. I'm just kind of looking down the line here. Can Miles knock off both Valdosta State? Yeah, that's going to be another tough one. I can't can't lean into Miles on that one. Maybe Fayetteville State. Maybe they, maybe they have a decent matchup against Indiana, Pennsylvania. So, you know, coming in as a number three seed. Yeah, coming out at P P S A C. That's probably about chance. I agree with you uh, to get a game if they can get that game. I think. Maybe you can uh, get a couple of them and they'll get the rolling. They can get yeah. out of that first round. I think I'm going to keep your eyes on. On the men's side, uh, Benedict Titans. They played Nova Southeastern. Always a tough matchup in terms of Nova. They're, they're playing some really good basketball. So uh, they come in as an eight seed as well. Uh, this is a team that was in the top 25. Um, they had that uh, late season defeat of Clark Atlanta University. I think it helped them. They maintained top 25 status throughout the season. Uh, but we were talking about the fact how many teams would come out of SIAC. They get Benedict, and that was not the automatic winner in terms of Clark Atlanta winning the SIAC championship. But does Morehouse get in? Does Miles get in? We shall see uh, for those that have not heard it yet. Clark Atlanta Panthers get in. They get in as a sixth seed. They play Florida Southern. Uh, they are the champions of the SIAC uh, they have a tremendous matchup where they play Miles, uh, where they took care of Miles for most of the game. Miles, to the credit, made a late run 
Uh, got it within four, and then uh, Clark Atlanta put in the work, got it done, and stretched about 10 to win solidly in that matchup. Going out of the CIAA, though, you have Lincoln, Pennsylvania Lions. They win the tournament up there, but they come in with an eight seed, and they play Gannon. A tough matchup. Well, West Virginia State, much like Langston, they get it done on both sides. Not only do the women get in, but the men get in. Uh, they face off uh, California, uh, Pennsylvania, that's California there. Uh, West Virginia State comes in as a seven seed uh, to represent uh, the final bid, if you would, in terms of Division II tournament. So you get four teams in uh, this tournament, two out of the SIEC, one out of the CIAA. We pretty much saw that late uh, that the CIAA would not get one. The question was, is could the SIC get more than two teams in? Uh, maybe three. Uh, stretch would probably get four. Uh, and they landed two, which means more houses out, miles is out to play for the championship. So uh, challenge some very good teams left on the table. Credit to West Virginia State in terms of the region they got in. Charles, what are your thoughts? Division two uh, in terms of these teams getting in. Uh, any concern about Morehouse or Miles particularly? not getting in after winning the West Division regular season and yeah. playing for the championship in a relatively good matchup against Clark Atlanta. Yeah, that was a, that was a bit of a surprise uh, to see uh, Miles uh, get in. Uh, but the question for me in terms of looking at these matchups is, is Clark, have they hit, hit hit a stride here? They have, I mean, they won, you know, 13 in a row, but uh, in the tournament, they were able to overcome some, some deficits. Uh, to get to the championship game, uh, took care of uh, a, a difficult Miles team that could play some lights out defense. Uh, but you know they they pretty much control that game. Uh, can they can their guard play continue to carry them uh, in this uh, in this tournament? So that's 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 the team that I'm really going to keep an eye out on and, and be paying attention to against Florida Southern. Well, we'll look forward to next week. We'll give you an update on the NIA tournament, the NCAA tournament. See you. Who won, who's not, if anybody survives, and are they still playing into next week? We will let you know. With that being said, let's take our first break. We'll come back on the other side and give you the poll rankings uh, just to give you an indication if anything changed in week number 10. Stick with us. We'll be right back after our first break. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. This is Ryan Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. I'm returning to Clinton, Paris, and Tampa's my community. I grew up here, went to school here, and my wife and I make our home here. What makes Tampa special are its people. So when I represent someone injured in my community, it's personal. Call my office and speak to a real lawyer and not some referral service. I will fight the insurance companies to get the settlement that you deserve. At the law office of Clinton, Paris, we take the pain out of being hurt. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gonna tell you if your team, if they want a lot yeah. and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yessa yes, and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Mills inside the HBC Sports Lab. Notice I said SIAC. 
<laughs> Mike want to make sure you understand, man. If people don't take too kindly talking about SIAC. No, no, no. S I A C C I W A. All work. And MIAC. Mm. That will work. But it's a little different between the two, the Division two levels. You know, they do it differently. So make sure you recognize and understand your HBCU sports culture when you're representing these conferences. Culture, so make sure that culture. you stay on top of it. Don't go to GCAC. July 1st, it is HBCU AC. That's the HBCU Athletic Conference. Get it right, folks. Don't be in this space. These folks will let you know, particularly if you go on Twitter running your mouth. They is a little different over there. With that being said, let's get into the poll rankings, and we're going to talk about the mid-major poll rankings with the SIC, CIAA, speaking of those teams, and the NIA programs, uh, and let you know where they sit. Let's go ahead and get started with those teams receiving votes, and we'll start with the women's uh, programs. Um, guess who dropped out this week? Uh, some teams got going and going pretty well. But as you see, Virginia State Lady Trojans, not only did they not make the tournament, but they also dropped out of the top five. Uh, they fall from the three spot all the way out. Uh, Virginia State Trojans, they did not play last week, so it wasn't because of loss. In the tournament two weeks ago, they lost to the eventual champions. That was in the semifinals. Uh, they are 23-5, and 13-4. Uh, but let's look at receiving votes. You see they are are actually the top team receiving votes at 27. Behind them comes out of the uh, SIAC, Savannah State Tigers, 20 and 6. They did hit the 20 win mark, 15 and 4 in conference play. But give me a couple of other teams that are behind and not on our uh, top seven, but are in the ranking when you look at the top 10. That is Kentucky State Thoroughbreds. They finished with 21 wins on the season, uh, 21 and 7, 15 and 4 to give them a little recognition. This Bulldogs, uh, uh, as they get into the tournament, they get to the magical number of the 21 season at 20 and 9, 15 and 3, as well as Philander Smith, the Panthers, 23 and 7, 15 and 5. So you notice and you will see in the top five programs as the 10 programs uh, that we rank those top five and those receiving votes, all of them have at least 20 wins on the season, Charles. Mm -hmm. I think that is a statement in itself. Uh, congratulations is. to the basketball on the mid-major level. Uh, let's look at the top five programs. Miles, Lady Golden Bears, 23-6, and 15-4. They were not ranked. They win this SIAC tournament, jump into the top five with three big victories during this tournament and win against Kentucky State uh, program out of their division. Really nice ball game. They go in that game late and pull away and get it done. Um, number four. Xavier, the Gold Nuggets, also playing in the NIA tournament, 25 and 6, 19 and 3, 53 points. They move up a spot, uh, although they did not play, but uh, with Virginia State dropping out and Miles jumping in, uh, you have Xavier, the Gold Nuggets, at number four. Bring us to number three, Langston Lions, as um, they get it done, 24 and 7, 17 and 5, uh, playing in the championship of the uh, Red of uh, the Sooner Athletic Conference, I should say, 60 points. They knew move up a spot from number four, so they're in the ranking. They are in the NIA Division II tournament. You'll see that reframe as we go up the rankings that these teams are all in postseason in national tournaments. At number two, Fayetteville State Broncos, 27 and two, 17 and one, three first place votes, a very solid, magical season. Set in five points, they remain number two in the NCAA Division II tournament. Can they continue this run? It will be fascinating to see. At number one, Russ, Lady Bearcats, 28-3, 17-1, five first-place votes, 71 points. They are the number one team as they remain there. Obviously, one of the highest seeds in the tournament, particularly in the NIA for uh, HBCU programs. They are representing at the number one spot, Charles. What are your thoughts on top five programs in week number 10? You do see one team dropping out, Virginia State, but you have five programs in. All of them are in the NAI or NCAA Division II tournament, multiple conference champions or tournament champions. Some did the magical duty and did both. What are your thoughts on the top five in week number 10? Who? These are the right top five teams when you take a look at Russ. 
Fayetteville State, Langston, Xavier. I was waffling on number five, but I, I, I can go with Miles, Lady really Golden Bears. But here's what's going to be interesting, especially once we get in a tournament and see how things shake out. If Russia falter and Fayetteville State mm-hmm. uh, does what they need to do in terms of uh, getting their first round victory against Indiana or Pennsylvania, we could see a, a, a flip flop right at the very end in terms of uh, Dr. Cavill's uh, uh, mid major. Uh, national champ, uh, and that will be fascinating to see uh, for Russ to have had the season that they've had for it to, you know, kind of falter at the end. That, that'll be very interesting to watch. So I'll be keeping an eye on Russ and Fayetteville State to see what they can do these first couple games in the tournament or first game in the tournament. I really appreciate those thoughts right there. And to your point, they only need to flip two, y'all. They only need yeah. to flip two. If they flip yeah. one, yeah, talking about potentially a share uh, in terms of at least first place votes. We'll see what it means in terms of what the other folks do behind them because this could come down uh, in terms of flipping one. But then who is number two uh, could be the difference in total points to find out whether you get essentially a share yeah. of a championship or is Russ able to hold on. I think one of the things is much as you said about it is not only are you able to get a win, or multiple wins in a tournament, which either really solidifies you holding it down or propels you to jump off. But it also is going to be talking about if you happen to have a loss, how do you perform in that loss? Yeah. Is it a yeah. close, intense loss, or is it one of those losses where you really don't look good? Could be a determinant factor, if not in terms of switching those votes, but certainly to see how many people rem- put you at number two or drop you all the way to a third, maybe even fourth spot, could be fascinating as you essentially uh, get ready to close out these polls. So I like the points you're making in terms of uh, breaking it down and seeing will anything change in the last poll coming out uh, after the tournament ends. I mean, especially when you look in the, at the seedings. I mean, Fayetteville State has the probably the best opportunity uh, for advancement in the tournament. So I, that, that's going to be kind of... Interesting to watch as we as we watch these games uh, this coming weekend. So. Good stuff, good stuff. With that being said, let's take our next break. We'll come back on the other side uh, and talk about the mid major for the men. Stick with me at uh, after this next break. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational, powerhouse, intelligent, and sincere. That's the voice you need for your creative marketing process. K-E-A-V-E-R-S-V-O-I-C-E dot com. Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice dot com. Always on, all the time. Nope. Nope. You want him? Ooh, I like him. (laughs) Quick, the quicker picker-upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot left. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir yes, and pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. 
This is Dr. Bill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab with none other than Charles Bishop. Give a shout out to Silas Edward McMorris, Chuck Hunt, Ricky Burden, Mary Allen, A.D., Edwin Moore, Lonnie Shaw, G. Boom Holly uh, in the building in regards to uh, giving us the thoughts and checking us out in terms of following the show today live. With that being said, and that's on the Facebook side, a uh, shout out to those on the YouTube side as well on Twitter in our other social media engagements as well. With that being said, uh, Charles, let's get into the May, mid-major for the men and see if you have any thoughts here. A little change, but nobody drops out. I will say that right now uh, in terms of this week. But those receiving votes and see if you have any thoughts on these teams here uh, in terms of the five outside receiving votes. You have two blue Bulldogs in that top six spot, the First one out, if you would, since we're talking about uh, tournament style. This is how oftentimes they say it in terms of making it to the tournament, in terms of making it to the top five. First mm. one out, y'all, is the two glue Bulldogs, 23 mm. and 6, 15 and 3. They do get the tournament invite, which is a more important a lot in some ways, I guess. 25 points. Benedict Tigers, 23 and 7, 15 and 6. They're also the second one out, but they get the bid as well, 18 points. Off. The radar outside of that, give you the next three Texas College Steers, 22 and 8, 17 and 5. They are in the tournament. Yeah, Morehouse Maroon Tigers, 20 and 10. They are not in the tournament in terms of the NCAA Division II. Xavier Gold Rush, 22 and 7, 17 and 5. Also not in the tournament. Talladega Tornadoes, 22 and 7. Now, just to give you a couple of more, because I wanted to get to Lincoln, Pennsylvania Lions at the CIAA. Just with 17 wins, they're uh, in the tournament. They win the CIAA to get in, credit there, but they're the only team in terms of way down to the bottom. But if you're looking at those top rounds, you should have another 10, 11 teams listed. They got over 20 wins in terms of this season thus far. Let's look in and see where you go there. As I see Charles with a little smile out, he wants to see what's going on. At number five, for Landa Smith Panthers, 21 and eight. Uh, uh, 14 and four, they were not ranked winning the GCAC. They find a way to jump into the top five, uh, with the tournament championship win there. The number four, Florida Memorial Lions, 21 and eight, 18 and four. Uh, they remain in the uh, fourth spot in terms of what goes down there. This is a team that had a second highest ranking in the NIA tournament. They have a three seed, it'd be fascinating to see what that means. They are 21 and eight, 14 and four. Bringing us to a couple of other teams that have deep runs in the SIC tournament. That's Miles Golden Bears. They also dropped the spot uh, as they come in in this. They were ahead and number two ranking. They have two wins in the uh, SIC tournament, but they lost in the championship. Ultimately drops them a spot, 22 and 6, 15 and 4, 65 points. Bring us to number two uh, that jumps over them just one spot, and that happens to be Clark Atlanta Panthers. The team that won the SIAC championship and defeat uh, Miles Bear are uh, 25 and 5, 16 and 5, 70 points. They're ranked three. They get the bid to the NCAA tournament at the Division II level. They are in our top spot at number two. Bring us to the top lion, if you would, in the world. It is Langston Lions, 29 and 1, almost getting to that 30 win mark. They win a game in a tournament. They get the 30 wins on the season, but that's not what they're really looking at. They're looking for a deep run. We'll see what that means. 21 and one in conference play, eight first place votes. Many people <laughs> said this team has the <laughs> talent to be a mm. deep team in the tournament, even won the national champion. We'll see what that looks like. Things kick off Friday. We shall see Charles, top five program, a couple of champions up there, the long team out of there that didn't win a championship is Miles well, Gold Bears. They win their division. Well, <laughs> what are your thoughts in terms of let, let, Let's see how this chaos might, might play out. Uh, four of the five teams uh, <laughs> in the top five have made the tournament. Should something cataclysmic happen in those four teams that made the tournament, should they lose in the first round? Does this vault the Miles Golden Bears into that number one spot and thus becoming – 
Dr. Cavill's. Man, you must be reading those books from the 80s. <laughs> uh, <laughs> with the chaos. Some, 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 some of the 80s. He said all those things. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> he said, oh. hey, why not? I'm just saying. I just looked at it. What I do you think like, about wow. two of those Bulldogs, Benedict Tigers being outside of the top five uh, over Miles? Do you have any problem with that? Or do you think Miles should fall out? Even though they made it determined similar to what you kind of seen on the winner's side. Oh that's 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 tough because I, I probably would have dropped Miles out. Uh, with, with 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 the loss uh and Benedict ascending up. I there there would have been some flip flopping down there, but but at uh woo, woo, yeah, I, I might have pushed Florida Memorial up. Pushed uh, Philander Smith up and slotted Benedict in at five. Ooh, wow. Interesting. Right. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Benedict did lose to Clark Atlanta in the tournament, uh, playing on this side. Clark, uh, Miles defeated Morehouse in terms of the tournament going in there. So fascinating to see. With that being said, let's take our next break, come back on the other side, get in the major division and see uh, – what goes on here? We'll serve our last segment and get in a little bit of the tournament talk and see if it will affect these uh, major division poll rankings. We'll start with the women. Stick with us after our next break, and we'll bring it back to you with the major division poll rankings of week number 10 uh, for the women. Itchy. Squirmy. Scratchy. Family not getting clean. Get Charmin Ultra Strong. Go get them. It just cleans better. With a diamond weave texture, your family can use less while still getting clean. Goodbye, itchy squirm. Hello, clean bottom. <laughs> <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? At Hampton Law, our primary goal is to provide non-traditional yet effective solutions and redefine the approach to client legal concerns. As your trusted legal advisor, we believe in sophisticated, personalized services that eliminate the confusion and complexity sometimes associated with legal matters. Our high standard for client care and concern, coupled with our extensive legal knowledge and skills, make Hampton Law a resource focused on the protection of the client's interest and overall goals. We value our clients and truly enjoy working with them. Visit thamptonlaw.com to conveniently schedule an appointment online. Tamika Hampton Esquire. 1631 Rock Springs Road, Suite 336, Apopka, Florida, 407-494-1471. thamptonlaw.com. No. No. You want him? Ooh, I like him. The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge, featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website www.slowburnwaco.com That's www.slowburnwaco.com When it comes to analytic data with your hip hop, if you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna love ya, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir, yes, and pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Bills inside the HBC Sports Lab. Let's get right to it with the women's major division. Team did drop out this week in week number 10. Howard Bison, 13 and 15, 10 and 4. Uh, they dropped out um, of the poll ranking in week number 10 as they had a nice run, but could not keep it going against Norfolk State to close out the season. Some of our teams receiving votes there are UABD, Golden Lions, uh, 16 and 15, 11 and 5 along with those Howard Bison that are still in the hunt there at 13 and 15, 10 and 4. Behind them a little bit is Alabama a and Bulldogs for 500 on the season, 15 and 15, as well as North Carolina Central 
uh, with 15, 14 more on the season. Let's get into the top five. Number five, the North Carolina NC State Aggies. Uh, they uh, closed out the season with a bit of going in the wrong direction. They have a loss and a win uh, as they played it out, 19 and 10, 13 and 5. They dropped a spot uh, last weekend because of that loss with the teams above them continuing to win. Bringing us to number four, Southern Jaguars. A uh, bit on a hot streak. They went two. Close out the season, get up to 15 and 14, 13 and 5 as they close out the flag season, preparing for the SWAC tournament. 54 points, they were not ranked, and they vault in terms of the top five. At number three, Grambling State Tigers, 21 and 8, 15 and 3, 62 points. Uh, remaining in the three spot, well, you're talking about having a solid season. First year coach gets it done for the Tigers. Can they make a run in the tournament? Everybody wants to know. Bring us to number two, Norfolk State Spartans, 24 and 5. 13 and one, one first place votes, uh, top 25, uh, mid-major program, 73 points, uh, remaining at the two spot, followed up by number one, Jack State Tigers close out the season. I should say in fine fashion, but I'm not sure if you can get any better than this. 18 mm. and 0. Uh, they sweep it. They get it done. Perfect season 20 in conference play, 23 and six, seven first place votes, 79 points. Charles liked to point out they had a couple of close games. Uh, nothing to get you excited about other than if you just a uh, scoreboard watching. It happens, but seeking <laughs> perfection, I think more importantly what they want is after getting the fifth consecutive regular season championship, great accolades there, but what they want is another tournament championship. They want to get back into the NCAA tournament as they were upset last year. They're tired of hearing about it. Um, it will be fascinating to watch. With that being said, Charles, as we get into the tournament, obviously we'll save that for the last segment. But now I want you to know in your thoughts on the top five programs. You did have a program dropping out with Howard Bison, Southern Jaguars jumping in. Any concerns in terms of the top five in week number 10 before we get into the tournament play? Not concerns with the top five. I, I agree with our A&T uh, and Southern. Southern has picked it up toward the end of the season. And, you know, quite honestly – they should worry people, I think, in a tournament. Um, they they have the ability to make a, a, a good deep run, especially when you take a look at uh, their bracket, uh, uh, taking on um, the higher seed going against Alcorn. Should they face uh, Gremlin? You know, it's a rivalry game. Anything can happen. Uh, so they have the opportunity to make a deep run in this tournament. One follow-up question. Not so much in terms of some folks have Norfolk State ranked number one. Poll rankings do that. Different people see it differently. And they might follow follow one conference a little more than the other. But my question is in terms of Jackson State in this poll ranking, have seven first place votes. Uh, do you see it possible that Norfolk State, uh, maybe some folks should consider them number one in terms of getting more first place votes? And finally, do you think Grambling State should get any first place votes? You know, Grandma State has a 10-game win streak coming into the tournament. Uh, I, I, I think they're, you know, if if, if not for Jackson State, uh, I'm sure they would garner uh, a, a couple of, of first-place votes. But uh, I think with, with the – there's Jackson State, Norfolk State, and then you have somewhere yeah. there. So I, I think, you know, the, they've, they've – Jackson State and Norfolk State have definitely separated themselves from the rest of the pack. Yeah, I think North Carolina a and State had a chance maybe to get some of those pill off, some of those first-place votes. Yeah. Uh, but late season, losing two out of your last three particular, the chance to make a statement in, in what would be in a regular season championship with essentially that second loss that really dropped them to the fourth seed uh, for their tournament. It's fascinating. But uh, great points you make there all around. Let's take our next break and come back on the other side, get into the men's top five and then get some final thoughts on the tournament this week as we pack our bags and get ready to get on the road and see it in fashion so we can come back and tell folks all the excitement in Norfolk and Birmingham. With that, we'll take our next break. We'll come back on the other side and give you the major division for the meet. To professional learning, teachers deserve better. From the leader in online learning, Stride brings you the Stride Professional Development Center an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that gives teachers choice and flexibility, allowing them to learn anytime and anywhere. 
Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. It's time you take charge of your learning. Visit us today to get started. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna love that, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir, yes, and pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Mills inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Watson and Charles Bishop. We have Charles giving his thoughts on the top five in week number 10. This time is for the major division. Uh, we do have a couple of teams dropping out. If you remember last week, it was really chaos or changes <laughs> in the top five. As you had three teams enter, well, we can't settle things because this week, not as much as last week, but you do have two teams uh, that are mixing it up that drop out of the top 10 as we look at it and get that started with uh, the Howard Bison falling out of the top five, uh, 15 and 16, nine and five. They had a tough loss to Norfolk State in the season finale. They were in a position to share uh, a championship and even maybe get in the mix for a number one seed, depending on the point differential in that matchup, uh, as uh, it could not be Norfolk State takes down Bison twice this year in regular season. Also, another team that's one of the hottest out there, South Carolina State Bulldogs. They mm. fall out of the top ten with a loss, 14-7, and 9-5, and five, as they could not continue – they're winning ways, but this is a dangerous team in the tournament. Again, we'll talk a little bit more about that in the last segment. Or as I said, you can go check out the deeper dive uh, as we did on BCSN uh, last night. With that being said, some teams receiving votes. Uh, you have uh, Southern Jaguars in the mix there. Tennessee State uh, Tigers still in the mix, but it's Alcorn State Braves. Uh, mm. You'll see them in the top five, actually, so it's really Tennessee State. Uh, in the mix, in the receiving vote, Southern as well. Uh, Bethune-Cookman Wildcats are trying to make a late-season push. We'll see what that means for them in the tournament. You do have Howard and South Carolina State uh, uh, in those top five spots teams looking at. With that being said, let's get in the top five. At number five, North Carolina Central Eagles, they jumped back into the top five. They were at the top of the rankings at the beginning of the season, particularly with that win over Norfolk State at home to get it done. Had a couple of tough losses here and there, some big wins. Uh, and But they find a way to close out strong uh, and get that number two seed. They're at 17 and 12, 9 and 5. Uh, they were not ranked last week with 45 points. They jumped back in the rankings at number five. Bringing us to number four, probably the hottest team out there not named Graham and the Norfolk State. Uh, with Graham's loss, they might be the hottest. Uh, in terms of what that looks like. That's the all point State Braves. Uh, they look for dead early in this season, uh, but they finished strong 10 wins, 14-7, and 13-5. and five. They finished with a number two seed, much like North Carolina Central, mm. uh, respectively in terms of the MEAC and SWAC, 48 points, and they actually move up a spot this week. You're talking about trending in the right direction. Yeah. Close out the season and enter the tournament. We'll see what it means. Uh, Texas Southern Tigers, 16-15, and 12-6. and six. They had a big win against their rival. They were pretty hot. Their long losses, guess what, to that number 14, all going to stay Braves. Uh, but uh, with that being said, they found a way to jump over. 51 points not ranked, and a lot of that is in the mix. We'll see what it means. Uh, at number two, Norfolk State Spartans, 21-10. and 10. Uh, The only men's program with 20 wins on the season, 11-3 in conference play, number one seed, another <laughs> – the championship, they get a regular season championship this year. This is with a new group of players. Uh, they find a way just to stay around the top. Can they make a run in the tournament? Mm -hmm. We'll see, as we said, at five first place votes, they are in the two spot at this point, under three points. At number one, Grandma State Tigers had a tough loss. It was on the road, double overtime, so it doesn't hurt them uh, in terms of the final poll ranking at least. Uh, in week number 10, Grandma State Tigers, 17 and 14, 14 and 4. Certainly another one of the hottest teams out there. Six first place votes, 104 points. Charles, take it away. What are your thoughts on the top five? New teams in the mix. Any concern? One and two? No concern with one and two. Um, to be honest with you, these are 
these are very worthy five. And one of the things that you look at with the MEAC tournament and the SWAG tournament, unlike the women's tournament, there isn't a Jackson State and Norfolk State being <laughs> near everybody else. You know, they're, they're, this is some serious parody because I could see any of these teams in the top five and even a couple teams that dropped out, they have the ability to ride a player. And can and can get hot in this tournament, so that's that's going to be fun to watch for both the MEAC and the SWAC tournament. I mean, especially when you talk about uh, guys like Bryce Harris with Howard. Take a look at uh, uh, Fred Cleveland with North Carolina Central. I mean, yeah, yeah it's, this this is parody. This is this is going to be fun these next few days. You know, last year I had a chance where I did a breakdown where we looked at the point differential in those matches all season, and you had like sixty. Some percent of the games that were within three uh, scoring uh, margins in terms of that nine points or less. Uh, they even grew up a little percentage when you talk about two and it dropped down percentage. Uh, but it is amazing when you look at the matchups this year with teams uh, that split during the regular season and even teams that had overall better records, but what they performed with that next group, if you would, and how close mm-hmm. those games were, whether they at home or on the road. So you're right. Whether it's in the MEAC and the SWAC, this, these two tournaments on the men's side, to me, are wide open. It's going to yeah. be fascinating to see. And that's kind of a per- perfect tease that you put out there. Let's get on the other side, and I got a couple of questions I want to ask you about the tournaments, uh, and we'll stick with it and call it a pin in terms of our last break. Let's get back uh, after that and talk a little bit about the tournament, but let's take our last break here on the other side. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is Always Ultra Thin's reinvented with the Always Triple Protection System. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvay. Let's take a press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, so listen to Professor Yes Sir yes, and sir. pay attention because he going to teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Bill. This is Dr. Bill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Charles. Charles, let's get into um, this MEAC tournament. Let's look at the women's bracket first. Um, you said this uh, as we kind of came into it. The number one seat is Norfolk State. Looks like there's a pretty good separation between those teams uh, just for the sake of getting into it let's look at some of these matchups uh, first round starts on Wednesday at 12 o'clock this is Eastern time uh, you have Norfolk State in that game one they face off the number eight seed South Carolina State that has a tough season I don't see a lot of problems there but you have number four in their next game uh, um, or next day because they actually play on Thursday at, at 12 o'clock same time that 4-5 matchup, which is always interesting, toss-up, Coppin State against Maryland Eastern Shore, um, intriguing teams. Uh, but the second game on Wednesday is number two seed Howard versus number seven Morgan State. Um, depending on who you talk to, Howard folks say no rivalry. Morgan State says, yes, it's a rivalry. Uh, two o'clock, which is just fascinating mm-hmm. to me when you come out of the SWAC team, you pretty much know who a rivalry or not. Uh, whether it's one side or the other. At number three uh, versus number six, you have North Carolina Central and Delaware State. That's a Thursday game, and it's the second game on Thursday. 
as you see in the MEAC, the women play in the morning and the men in the evening. We'll talk about them a little later. But I guess the question I had is not so much about the matchups. Again, uh, we encourage folks to go check out the breakdown that we did, extended version uh, last night. You can go see uh, the special edition show we did on BCSN, uh, the collaboration between Brian and AD of Sports Rap and uh, Charles and I, along with Charles Edmond uh, from the Carlos Brown show, uh, providing an update of what they thought could take place in the tournament. We talked about key players, matchups, rebounds, get into the numbers, take a deep dive. But the question I have for you, um, who is the lowest seed uh, that can get a upset in that first round? Where do you see it coming from, if it happens? Uh, but give me the give me Coppin State. Who who are they playing again first round? Yeah, Coppin State at four seed versus the five Maryland Eastern Shore. That's always the top up. So you can go right there. You have Howard versus number seven, Oregon State, or three six, which is always intriguing to me. North Carolina Central and Delaware State intriguing matchups. A lot of these teams had the one and one, depending on what they're home and away but they stretched out against other teams. The only clear one, as we said to me, is that one versus eight. You may say there's more clarity in the tournament, but if you had to pick a lower seed to do a first-round upset, Wednesday or Thursday, where do you see it coming from? Uh, I can see Maryland Eastern Shore uh, because in a lot of ways, even as it's the five seed, they remind me so much of a Grambling team in the SWAT. Grambling being uh, – a team that is a higher seed, but they don't have a, a top 15 score uh, in the SWAC. Uh, they really do it with uh, team ball. They do it with defense. And I see Maryland Eastern Shore kind of in the same vein uh, as that sort of team. They do have young lady Ariel Sewell uh, leading score for them, but I, I see them playing much more team ball, much more unselfish ball, much like Grambling. So that's a team to keep an eye on, I believe, in the end. Good stuff, good stuff. Any team, I guess Maryland is sure if they come out of there, they face up against Norfolk State. I imagine you said, uh, whatever. Norfolk yes. State seems to me have a clear path to a championship game. Clear path. So I guess if you're going to look for a lower seed to go the deepest in the tournament, it would have to come from the lower half of the bracket. That's a seven seed Morgan State or a six seed Delaware State. Can you see a Delaware State finding a way to make it to a championship game to face Norfolk State? Or do you think to some degree that this is probably going to stay made chalk, even if you might get an upset, like you said, Maryland, Eastern Shore, four? It won't yeah, last long. I think it's chalk on that side of the bracket. I mean, mm. so. Mm -hmm. I see a little more um, madness coming out, maybe the bottom part. I think the top part is really going to stay chalk. I think if anything happens that Morgan State, if you would, over Howard, they kind of split in regular season. So mm. maybe a chance. They just seem to match up there. If Morgan State can get out of that, you can see it. But I could even see a semifinals uh, on Friday at two with a number seven seed place versus a number six seed Delaware State. And really talk about Oh, that would be interesting. But let's get into the SWAC a little bit, talk about the SWAC tournament in terms of those matchups on the women's side. Obviously, the number one seed uh, in terms of those rankings are Jackson State, yeah, the number two seed. Uh, Fam U, three C Southern, and the four C uh, Pine Bluff. I think I know where you might be going. Similar type of question: uh, Which one of the lower seeds can go the furthest in the tournament? Which direction are you going? Which one of the lower seeds can go the the, the furthest in the tournament? Yeah, which yeah. automatically means you're going to get at least one upset. Yeah, but yeah. if you have yeah. to stretch it out, and one of those teams actually gets on a run. If I yeah. forced your hand, uh, yeah. which one would you say it is? It would be the number four seed, UAPB, because I think they are the most talented. <laughs> uh, they have a talented trio. If Zay Green, Karai Beck, and Maya Pete all show up, they are as formidable as any team in the tournament. They do mm -hmm. have the Goliath in Jackson State that they have to go through. Uh, but uh, in terms of just raw talent on the team, if they can put – the, the, the regular season behind them and play their best ball uh, for three days, that's a team uh, that can uh, actually go all the way. 
Obviously, Southern is not a lower seed at three coming in this tournament. Right, but right. Queen Pine Bluff, and the reason I'm saying I'm asking this follow up question that I think where you went is perfect for that first question and fair. But if I had to give you, um, obviously, Pine Bluff, that would be a semifinals matchup. Yeah. Uh, or Southern, which would be in a championship game. Right. If a team you had to pick one of those two teams that I Southern. forced you to say would get the upset of Jackson State. Would it be Southern trying to do it again as they did in the semifinals? Yeah. Or would you say it would be another semifinals loss with Pine Bluff doing it this year? No, uh, the, the Southern is a team, like I mentioned earlier, uh, because of where they are on this side of the bracket that has a, a great opportunity to get to the SWAT championship game uh, to take on a Jackson State, to take on a potential UAPB. But that is the team that probably scares me the most. Uh, in terms of playing Jackson State, I, I don't think Jackson State uh, has any issues with UAPB. Uh, they've never had issues with UAPB, but, but Southern is the team that I would keep my eye on with regards to a potential matchup with Jackson State in the SWAC Championship game. Good point. And I will point out that Grambling folks are going to be like, yeah, hold on for you, Pencil Southern. Yeah, we are they, they can jump. We'll in. see them in they the semifinals. And we'll jump <laughs> ahead. You don't have to worry about them jumping. Uh, they, I know. They, they says the other Tigers. Uh, but with that being said, let's go to the men's side. Um, let me give you the breakdown of the brackets here. Looking at the MEAC, number one seed, obviously, is Norfolk State. They face the number eight in Coppin State. Coppin State, unlike on the women's side with South Carolina State, really struggled all year. Coppin State has been able to get a key win here and there that really kind of opens up people's eyes. So as they have struggled, it hadn't been in the same way. Um, that is a Wednesday game. First game of the evening at 6 o'clock. Uh, Norfolk State has the advantage of playing in the scope in Norfolk, uh, so it should be interesting in there. Uh, the top half of that bracket, uh, that second game, which is game seven, is played on Thursday, which is the first uh, matinee game for the men that evening, which is a four versus five. That's Morgan State. I mean, excuse me, four in Howard versus the number five, Morgan State. Going to the bottom half of the bracket, which is the second game, which is the mm -hmm. late game on uh, Wednesday, is the number two seed, North Carolina Central. Um, intriguing when you talk about uh, <laughs> Coach Luton. He can get it done there. You know, he finds a way to get things done. He's kind of missed out the last couple of years. Can he find a way to get it? He's gotten all the way to a two seed, so the Eagles are playing relatively well. He had some tough losses of the season. But they rounding in the shape. They play a number seven Maryland Eastern Shore, which is enigma. They've had some big upsets. A solid defensive team frustrates you because they'll slow you down. Uh, but the uh, late game on went, uh, Thursday night uh, at the bottom part of that bracket is the number three South Carolina State versus number six Delaware State. Similar type of question. You just see this as chalk. Or based on what we said earlier, that these teams are a lot closer. There's yeah. going to be an upset. Can you tell me? And obviously, this is not for betting purposes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but not this, not this state of North Carolina. Are you saying, mm -hmm. upset, yeah, who, who are you going to say is going to get tossed in the fryer in terms of the upset in terms of what's going on here? Uh, Delaware State is a 16 playing number three. Who? Delaware State is the sixth seed, and they're playing three South Carolina State. One of the hottest teams until they last the last game. They were fighting for a two seed, uh, but they fell to a three seed. Delaware State, uh, earlier in this season, this weird team, team obviously had the wins <laughs> against yeah. Grambling of all teams. In terms yeah. of the yeah. They wish they could be in the SWAC tournament because not only did they beat Grambling, they beat Bethune Cookman. <laughs> and those were in two tournaments, neutral site games. Uh, fascinating there, but uh, they're in the MEAC, so they face the number three seed South Carolina State. Is that where you're going with the upset? I'm going with uh, Delaware State being the chaos team over the MEAC. Can you see more than one upset in the MEAC, or are you just sticking yeah. with one? No, I actually can see more than one. So upset. keep your eyes on the yeah. MEAC. A lot of yeah. things could happen. It could be interesting. Yeah. Uh, that's fascinating. I'll see that. I will keep my eyes on this. Obviously, Friday games. Uh, it would be fascinating to see in those semifinals. We got to keep our eyes there. In terms of the SWAT, let's go to the mm. SWAT. In terms of your top seed, 
uh, and is Grambling in terms of the number one seed. We told you Alcorn finds themselves all the way up to a number two seed. That's one versus eight. That's actually a rematch of the last game with Alabama State. Uh, was able to get in the tournament. Alabama State will be close to home. Montgomery's a short trip, and obviously they have a lot of alumni in the city of Birmingham. That'll be fascinating to see uh, what that looks like when folks take off lunch a little early to try to get in there to see what that looks like. You have that matchup, Alcorn against number seven, Alabama a &M, another team coming out of Huntsville, also have a lot of alumni, obviously, in Birmingham. So it's fascinating to kind of see is the local teams the lower seeds? Is it enough to help them get an upset? Uh, we'll see what Charles thinks about that. You have your three versus your six. Fascinating matchup. Classic <laughs> tournament game two years ago. These teams always played close, home mm. and away. And this is mm. no matter who's coaching the team. Mm. Uh, these things are just epic battles, particularly on the basketball side between Jackson State. And then, obviously, you have the last matchup over there. Uh, with Southern uh, getting it going uh, in that other division for that matchup. With that being said, what do you think about the SWAC? Uh, do you see upsets uh, in this? Where is it coming from? I have to ask you before you get going, is it multiple upsets? Why and where do you see things in the SWAC? You'll be in the building, so I'll be yeah. texting back. I'll be watching on iPad, but I need you to be my ears yeah. and my eyes. Uh, in terms of making me really feel and making sure my eyes are not deceptive in terms of what I see watching streaming as I'm in MEAC territory covering that tournament, giving you the opposite side of what took place? Uh, there are two teams, I think, to keep an eye on in terms of being chaos agents. I think Jackson State <laughs> is the number six seed. If they can yeah. somehow – Get the 600-pound gorilla that is Texas Southern off of their back. They are a team that has enough firepower and really good rebounding that can make a deep run in the tournament. And the same thing can be said about Bethune Cookman over in the opposite on the opposite side of the bracket. Uh, mm. uh, that that's a team that actually I, I've kept an eye on. That uh, to me, if they can put things together in the tournament. They could turn some heads. They can get the upset over Southern and could possibly get an upset over Graham. Wow. I like the way you put that. So you see potential upsets. If those teams can get that upset, how far do you think they can go in the tournament? Can they cut down the nets? Do they have that level of talent on those teams? Uh, if, they, if they can get out of that run on quarterfinals, it's always fascinating because I think in a lot of these tournaments, you know, it's one thing to get, you know, a major upset. Credit to the team. But I always mm -hmm. like to see uh, can a upset turn into a win, uh, an additional win, or in tournament short format, can you get three of them and close out the next? Obviously, we've seen that last year with Texas Southern, but that's kind of a different beast. They find a way to turn it on. So I'm not sure if it surprised too many people that they actually went yeah, on that one. Right. Like, I just different. Right. Can anybody kind of duplicate that as a seven, eight seed this year in the SWAT? The the the, the X factor team to me is the six seed is Jackson State. Uh, like I said, I, I think they have enough scoring firepower uh, from from their guards as well as really elite rebounding from from their bigs that that they can get on a run and and can really. They can cut down the nets. I do believe that they have the talent, but whether they can put it together is a completely different thing because they've been sort of an enigma. We've seen them, uh, especially the early part of the season, playing uh, out of conference games against some MIAC teams and look really, really good. Injuries took their toll on them during the course of the season where they sort of got mediocre again, about a four-game uh, losing streak in there. And then uh, they, they, they were able to pick things up a little bit toward the end, but that's a team that if they can put things together, they can cut down the nets. Good stuff. Good stuff. With that being said, we'll call it a close of the show today. Again, uh, no lab on Thursday. We'll be doing spring break, but our spring break will consist of heading to the tournaments. Charles will be in Birmingham. I will be in Norfolk uh, checking out the MEAC while Charles is checking out the SWAC. We'll keep you updated. 
uh, through Twitter. Check us out, and we'll find some ways to get some updates and give our thoughts as on Saturday somebody will cut down the nets and put on their dancing shoes as they will be headed to the tournament. We find out on Sunday in terms of those teams that do get it done, where will they be seated? Uh, so by then we'll know what took place in the NIA tournament in terms of the first couple of rounds, as well as the NCAA Division II. And we'll set up the tournament for the NCAA March Madness and see what that looks like. I'm excited. Great time of the year. So keep us plugged. Uh, safe travels to you, Charles. With that being said, want to say thank you for listening inside the HBC Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, the Dean of HBC Sports. Coming inside the lab in the College of HBC Sports with Mike Watson and Charles Fitcher. Talking about Mike, let's see if we can catch him over there for the Bundy uh, concert for the Houston Rodeo. Big time. Get our tickets and make sure that we have Mike treat us since he's been doing his own thing. Please. (laughs) As we've been carrying the weight on this side, but we kid, uh, he's getting it done, but he always finds a way uh, to share some love. Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Reels inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop every Tuesday and Thursday. Again, we will not have a show on this Thursday. We'll be back on our regular schedule next week as we start getting things going and count down to 500. Just so that show short before I close out. Charles wanted yeah. to add to that. Real quick, breaking news. Uh, Swag is named their 2023-2024 uh, All-Swag men's basketball teams. Jackson State's Ken Evans was named the player of the year while Jordan O'Neal of Jackson State was the defensive player of the year. So Women? that's why I, I, I said, I'm sorry. Women's? Women's? Uh, on the, uh, that's on the men's side. So I'm looking at Jackson uh, State on, had on player the of the side. year on the men's side and defensive player of the year, which brings up to your point. It shows you the talent that is there uh, as they get the accolades. And that's from the SIDs and the coaches. Um, yeah. who said that these were the players that kind of separated themselves. Any news on the women's yet? Uh, let, me see. Hey, let me see. Uh, Can I get I would like a, a quick update on the women? I'm trying to look for the women. I don't have the women. Yeah, as I, a whole. I, keep I, talking I, there. I, I got the women. I got the women. So okay. on the women's side, Florida a and Ariana Grizzle was named huh? player of the year. <laughs> oh, we wow. talked about this last <laughs> Please go and watch the show last night because we told you what happens in the SWAC. We told you voted coaches and SIDs. We told you where they trend. They tend to look at just the stats. People do not like data analytics, but when you talk about SIDs and coaches, uh, they're so worried about their teams or whatever. They look at the tech. Uh, Grizzle for the fam, you was the leading scorer. There was some questions in terms of Jackson State that had obviously – a, a number one team, 18 and 0, but they spread out the points and tells you about the superior team. But it looks like Charles has some added news to add to that breaking news. What else you got? Well, defensive player of the year, Angel Jackson from Jackson State. Yeah. Let me give you the first team, all swag team on the women's side. I want to know Ari- the first team. I want to yeah. know the first team. Ariana Grizzle from Florida AM, Maya Crump yep. from Jackson State, uh, yep. Tyler Bowler from Jackson State, Two. Ryan Payne. From uh, Prairie View and Zay Green from uh, UAPB, they uh, round out the All Swag first team. I was wondering if Jackson could slide three in there. I told you that was a thing that you could get a player of the year and get multiple things. They did get the two, obviously uh, two that we thought would be on there, but I thought maybe a third one slide in pretty close. Uh, second team, how many did Jackson State players? Uh, second team, second team uh, one, and that's Angel Jackson. One. So she was okay. defensive player. Yeah, and, I knew and I wanted to like could team. slide up to their first team. As I said, you know, you studied this for long. Uh, I just know the trends. It's not what I thought. Uh, I think you can make multiple arguments. But congratulations to all those players. But to your first point, as you did breaking news, great job there, Charles. Uh, mm-hmm. Jackson State. And it shows the talent of Jackson State, why you said, which makes that 3-6 matchup in that quarterfinal Fascinating. game. Fascinating. <laughs> Fascinating. That is going to be on Thursday, 2 o'clock. I'm, again, if you can't get excited about these tournaments uh, in regards to what could happen in the 
parity, and I'm talking about on the good line. I think the teams are deeper than error. So you're getting solid games and solid plays. It is something to watch. Let me close it out. We stretched it out as long as we could. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Cabell, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Obviously, that is X, formerly known as Twitter. D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-B-I-L. That's inside the HBC Sports Lab 1 on uh, X, formerly known as Twitter. Facebook and YouTube is simply inside the HBC Sports Lab. Dream big. Continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Charles? Of course. Roy? Lecture. Did this. Be safe, everybody. Have a great one.